It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Chicago Bulls PA announcer, Tim Sinclair. How are you doing today? Great, Brandon. Thanks for the opportunity. This will be fun. Thank you. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to become a PA announcer? Uh, Honestly, I didn't ever really know that. It kind of happened on accident. I was working in radio, and I loved doing radio, and I loved watching sports, but never had really thought about the two until, um, man, it was, it's probably been almost 20 years ago. Now the bulls were making a change and I was working in Chicago at the time, but I was 20 years old. I, I had no experience other than that would be the coolest job ever. Uh, didn't apply, knew I wouldn't get it. And I wouldn't have, um, and didn't think about it again for many years until uh, the University of Illinois had an opening and someone suggested I apply for that. And I did uh, and started getting opportunities then. So um, it was never a, like a lifelong dream of mine. It just sort of something that uh, naturally occurred out of my radio career. Of course, how did you know that you wanted to work in professional sports and also do the University of Illinois? Yeah, again, it, it was never something I planned. Um, I think I realized that if I wanted to do this job um, and, and get paid anything for doing it, um, I was going to have to work at some some bigger levels, or I was just going to have to be content uh, to do any sport where they'd give me a microphone and know that it was going to just take up lots of hours on weeknights and then throughout my weekends and be okay with that. Um Thankfully, my very first opportunity was a Division I uh, opportunity with the University of Illinois. And so I jumped right in there, uh, but, but didn't necessarily think I, I maybe had the chops for the professional level. I, I didn't really know um, until all of a sudden um, I started being considered for some of those jobs. And, and then I realized, well, maybe, maybe I can do this. What is it like balancing three professional teams and one college team being their PA announcer? Uh, a lot of creative calendar work. <laughs> you know, I have all these different colors on my calendar, on my phone. And so I know which city I need to be in and which team I'm working for. And as soon as those schedules come out, I immediately put them in the calendar because I have to start seeing, do I have conflicts? Like, are there overlaps? What, what do I do? Um, so it, it's um, better now that three of my teams are all in the same city in Chicago instead of being in Indianapolis where I was with the Pacers for a while. Um, and then uh, Illinois in Champaign and they're about two hours apart. So it's not too terrible, but there are conflicts from time to time. Can you talk about your time with the Indianapolis Pacers? I loved it. They gave me my first shot uh, at the NBA and uh, I was there two years and I expected to be there 30. Um, there were very few things that would have pulled me away from doing um, that job, but the opportunity to do the Bulls and the Bears and the Fire all in Chicago, uh, was it, that was the one, th- the one thing that, that could have pulled me away. But I, I loved Indy. Um, I still get to go back. I did the NCAA tournament here recently in Indianapolis, and uh, will occasionally uh, show up for other things as asked. But they gave me so, so many opportunities. I went to India with the team, uh, which was awesome. And we got to, to fly to Mumbai and do a couple of games there with the NBA. So um, I, nothing, nothing but love for my friends with the Pacers. What was it like to get the job with the Chicago Bulls? Man, that that was one that I, I didn't see coming either. And, you know, I grew up watching Jordan. I grew up 
um, in the, in the nineties, you know, when the basketball was maybe not heyday, but it was certainly uh, about as big as it, it got. And so I remember the introduction that Ray Clay did that now I get to do. Um, and so when I even knew it was a possibility and they sent me that serious track to record a demo for them, I got chills when I, when I heard it and I was recording it just because it was so ingrained in me and in my childhood. So, um, man, it, it's about as big, a, big an honor as I can think of. What is it like to also cover the Chicago Bears in the NFL? That's been a great experience, too. The weird thing is I did the entire first season with no fans. So I had I, I didn't get to experience the crowd and them feeding off me and me feeding off them. Um, and so I can't wait for this season to, to have fans back in the seats and to, and to finally be able to um, do the job as it was intended. Uh, but it, but that kind of goes in the, in the honor section with the, with the bulls too, because um, man, I, I can't think of anything better. There are two of the most well-known sports franchises in the world and uh, to be affiliated in any way, shape or form is really pretty cool. What is it like to cover soccer? Soccer is a bit of a different animal because there's, quite frankly, relatively little to do during a soccer match for me. Um, Pre-game is really busy. Halftime is really busy. But, you know, during the actual gameplay, we're only talking about goals, cards, and substitutions. And there's relatively few of all of those things. So, uh, you know, we get to go up there and, and watch a soccer match and then occasionally scramble to go okay it's time to talk now it's substitutions happening or a goal just got scored we got to do our job now um and i'm every year i'm learning more about the sport this is my eighth year i think with the fire um and i knew nothing about soccer coming into it uh, very very little and so uh, it's been a, an educational experience but a, but a great one i love it as a pa announcer what is it like to prepare for games my job is way easier than say a play-by-play -play guy. Um, you know, they've got to know stats and statistics, not only for right now, but from the past and what they've done in previous games, you know, all that they've, there's so much they have to know because they've got to be able to tell the story uh, for the audience. I really just have to know how to pronounce names and then ideally uh, be able to regurgitate that on command when something happens. So, uh, you know, I show up anywhere from an hour and a half to three hours early, depending on the sport and depending on uh, how much rehearsal their team wants to do. Um, and then we go through the script, make sure there aren't typos, make sure I understand what I'm supposed to say and when I'm supposed to say it in terms of all the non sports stuff, the commercial reads, the, you know, you have dancers coming out on the floor, you got to introduce them, that kind of stuff. And then I need to make sure I know how to pronounce names. And um, after that, I've got a, a pretty cushy gig. Of course, with COVID this past year, what was it like knowing how to like manage, like, is this player going to play? Oh, this player's not playing. You know, for me, it wasn't hard at all because uh, essentially they'll come up before the game and say, you know, scratch, scratch, scratch. And that's why I just do that and I'm done. You know, I, I call what's in front of me. And so I don't really have to make too many adjustments other than occasionally there will be a few players playing who would never have played previously that you have to all of a sudden know how to say their name. But otherwise, uh, it, it wasn't too bad. The, the biggest thing with COVID was, of course, having no fans and having to try to be as normal as possible for these players um, with, with no crowd. And, and that proved to be a little difficult. I mean, you fall into the rhythm of the game eventually, but uh, it, it's not ideal for sure. What was it like getting the opportunity to be the PA announcer for a college team? Um, well, that's the team I really grew up loving at the University of Illinois. That was the first college basketball game I ever remember going to. I remember the previous PA guy's voice, Jim Shepard and the band and, you know, just the, the chance of the cheer, the tradition of college. Um, I love the NBA because it's, you know, it's a show and the lights are bright and everybody's paying attention, but I love college too, because um, of some of those things I mentioned, you've got the tradition, you've got the fight songs, you've got the student section, you've got, you know, all those things make that environment 
super cool. And then when you know you have the NCAA tournament that everybody's trying to get into, uh, those one and done March Madness games, uh, that whole thing I love. And to then get to do that for my team, uh, the team that I grew up loving was, is pretty cool. What is some of the similarities and differences between working in professional sports and college sports as a PA announcer? Um, from, from my job, they're, they're kind of the same uh, in that the job is very similar. I have to say and do most of the same, the same things. Um, the atmosphere is a little different. As I mentioned, the lights are a little brighter in the NBA um, and because you know ESPN's paying attention to every single one of those games, whereas college, they may or may not be. Um, but, but otherwise, most of it's very, very similar. You know, they give them bigger crowds maybe in, in the NBA. Um, but, you know, I, I just, I go and do my job and it doesn't feel a whole lot different other than I got to make sure I got to say the right team. What was it like covering the March Madness? This year was my first year doing uh, March Madness and it was great. I, I'd always wanted to do an NCAA tournament game and I got to do the round of 64, the round of 32 and all the elite eight games at Lucas Oil. And um, so first of all, those were my first games in a year that had fans. So it was great to have fans back in the building. Now they were very far away from us um, and very socially distant, but at least we had people in the building. Um, the downside was the NCAA was super careful. So not only did I have to wear a mask while speaking, I had to wear a face shield too. So I had like multiple layers in front of me, but thankfully my mic sort of hooked right in there. Um, so that was sort of the negative, but the rest, the experience and the pageantry and the focus on all those games, um, Man, I, I wish Illinois would have done better. But other than that, I was really, really excited to be there. What are some of your favorite memories covering the Chicago Bulls as the PA announcer? Well, I've only done one year. Um, so that's, you know, I've got a somewhat limited number of things to choose from. The biggest one probably was when Zach Levine and Kobe White each hit eight or more threes in the same game. I think Kobe had eight, maybe, and Zach had 10 or 11. Uh, and that's the first time a, a pair of teammates each had eight or more in, in an NBA game in history. So that was kind of fun against the Pelicans. They just sort of, uh, they weren't missing. And so I got to say three points, Zach Levine or Kobe White a lot. And um, that was that was pretty special. We just actually did a video on it uh, for YouTube with the Bulls that I got to narrate. So um, I guess I'd put that at the top of the list for now. But I hope there's a lot more to come. What were some of your fondest memories covering this show? Chicago Bears? Man, that's a good question. Um, I, I felt like the Bears season was one big long practice for me because we had no fans. I'd never done an NFL game before. I'd done some college football. Um, it, it felt a little practice-like for me personally, um, but I would say there, there's a couple. One, we had a bunch of big name quarterbacks come in this year. So Tom Brady was, was one of them. Um, and, and just to get to see him on the field and before he retired, announce his name, that was pretty cool. Drew Brees was in town. So those kinds of things to get to introduce guys who are first ballot, no doubt hall of famers is about, uh, as, as special as it gets. And then, um, you know, winning enough games to get to go to the playoffs, even though they lost in the first round to have a, a season that was up and down and up and down and up and down uh, and still make the playoffs um, left a little hope for the future. What are some of your favorite catchphrases you use for the Chicago bears and the Chicago, Chicago bulls? Um, I don't have too many gimmicks, I guess, for lack of a better phrase um, for the bears though. Um, you know, it, it's been commonplace for a number of years that when your team is on defense, the public address announcer does that. It's third down. That kind of try to get everybody loud just in time for the other team to snap the ball. I want that we want to get our crowd pumped up on third down too, but I didn't want to do the thing that everybody else seems to be doing. So um, one of the phrases in Chicago has always been bear down. You know, that's just their defensive kind of mindset. So I did a bear down it's third down kind of thing so on third down we'll do bear down it's third down and that's 
ideally when we have fans in the seats, that'll get them going. We also do a sort of a similar cadence first down bears or touch down bears. So it's all that kind of cadence um, with the bears, the bulls, the only real, um, I do my three point call is three points. And then the name of whoever just, just hit it. Um, and then on free throws, I'll do um, Zach Levine at the line for the bulls shooting two. I kind of just drop that a little bit and, and let it resonate a little. So those are the, those are the things that we've got going right now. What is it like since of course COVID being famous for TikTok and doing the PA for TikTok, <laughs> like the legends editions? Yeah. You know, there, those have been fun. It was total. That was an accident too. Like I was just, I'd had people ask about how to pronounce some names a little bit here and there. I'm like, I'll just do a silly TikTok video of, I don't remember who I did first. I think Jokic, because he had just won the uh, the MVP and I'd heard somebody talk about it. Like, all right, I'll do Nikola Jokic. We'll do the pronunciation video and people started watching it. So then I did Giannis and then that one blew up. And so I, it, it's been a lot of fun because one, people people care about the NBA. And so that makes, makes it fun. Um, some people differ on how you pronounce names. And so that makes it interesting to have some conversations too. Um, and I, I wanted to get all of the tricky NBA players names done. Um, and I'm almost through everybody in the league, I think, who has an, an even sort of difficult name. And I realized I was gonna have to do some legends of the game because people were asking for, oh, do Michael Jordan or do Wilt Chamberlain or whoever, which they don't have difficult names to say. They just wanted to hear a PA guy say them. Um, so I've done a uh, classic, which is guys who used to be in the NBA who have hard names, legends, which are obviously the greats of the game who may or may not have hard names. I've started a random one of just random athletes who have really complicated names to say. And uh, man, I, I don't know if it's fame or not, but it's been a whole lot of fun. What is it like announcing games for, of course, Kobe White? Oh, I love Kobe. He, he's great. He's been put in a tough position to play out of position uh, since the Bulls didn't really have a, a rock solid point guard. Um, but man, it's been fun to see him grow and develop as a spot up shooter and as one who can play the point if necessary. I would love to see him back in his regular, you know, role. But um, man, he's, he's a great dude. His hair cracks me up every time. A funny story about Kobe. Um, we were doing rehearsals I think it must have been preseason and they had him listed at six, four in, in our guide. And so they were out there doing shoot around and we were doing our rehearsals. And so we were going through the intros and I said, uh, a six, four guard from North Carolina. And, uh, he comes over to me and goes six, five. I was like, you got it. You're six, five now. So, um, if, from that moment forward, Kobe White's been six, five. Of course, what is it like covering games during during the after pandemic? Well, it's been nice to, you know, the last four games of the Bulls season, we got fans back, uh, some fans, 4,000 instead of 20 or 22,000. But we at least had some people in the building. Um, so that's been great. I, I love having people back. Um, I'm really hopeful. And it sounds like every arena seems to be in a place where it's going to be fully open starting in the fall if it's not already so um man i'm just i'm ready for it's amazing how quickly you forget what at full crowd is like when you've worked for you know 120 straight games with nobody um having people back is just such a great feeling and the adrenaline uh that really gets that flowing for sure what was it like this year covering the bubble Love the bubble. It was a long time away from home because uh, I did the NBA bubble and then the WNBA bubble. So I, I went from one and then drove straight to the other. Um, but man, the experience was a once in a lifetime thing that you can't trade or get anywhere else. You know, there's just a few of us in history who hopefully will ever have had to do that. Um, so I made a lot of great friends, some of the NBA officials, you know, that I never would have really met. Otherwise, we were all in the same hotel and we shared a pool and stayed up late talking and swimming. And um, so that was a lot of fun. And, and then you're also stuck at a Disney resort with the whole NBA. I, I've called it before NBA summer camp, because it's just like, all right, everybody's in one place. You're kind of in these 
dorms, although there are hotel rooms, and you you have swim time, you have bike time, you can go fishing, and then sometimes you all get on a bus and you go to an activity. And in this case, it was always an NBA game. Um, and you just walk around and see Anthony Davis or JaVale McGee or LeBron James or, you know, anybody could have showed up. And so uh, that made it a lot of fun. What is it like covering the WNBA? You know, uh, the WNBA was fun. I'd only done about six or eight games for the Indiana Fever before I got the chance to go work in the Wubble, as they called it. Um, and man, the skill level on those courts is is really quite something. It was, um, again, I'd seen some of the teams, but I hadn't seen all of them. And because it's a smaller league, I got to see all of them a lot because they, they rotated through every other day. And so I, I saw you know, the entire league over the course of four days, pretty much over and over and over again. Um, and, and they're great. It's so, they're so much fun. And uh, I'm glad to see them getting a little more notoriety here recently. And their swag is super cool. Like their, their hats and their sweatshirts and stuff like that. I love it. What is something that you learned now that you didn't know before becoming a PA announcer on the professional level? Oh, man, there's a lot that falls into that category. I mean, one thing you just get to see all the inner workings of a team and how many people that really does take to to put this together because we're there before doors open. And so we see all the strength and conditioning coaches out on the court with the guys. We see the assistants leading them through drills and shoot around. And then you get to see the, you know, team doctors looking at people. And I mean, it, it's a such a large organization. And then this past year, because of COVID, uh, those of us who were courtside had to get multiple COVID tests before every game. And so then you're ushered into a whole new world of all these people who are taking care of players and now me um, to make sure everybody's healthy. So um, I, I think I kind of knew it that there was a lot happening, but it, it was very interesting to see it all firsthand. What advice would you have somebody looking to become a PA announcer on the professional level and college level? I mean, the big thing is work every opportunity you get, whether it's high school or some Legion ball or uh, college or they want you to announce a band competition, you know, whatever it is, if you can get a mic and introduce people and and learn how to use your voice and work a room and um, and do your job well, that's that's the first thing. Don't let any job be too small. Um, to, to get more experience because you never know who you'll meet in the process and who they'll go, Oh, I need this guy for this. And now all of a sudden you get other opportunities. I always say three things though, be capable. So you're going to be good at what you do, be available when they call, take the job and then be humble. So when you get the job, be easy to work with. And if you can do those three things, um, you'll start getting more and more opportunities. And as you meet the right people and as jobs become available, um, you'll, you'll at least be on the list to be considered. Pro jobs are really tough to get. You know, there are 30 NBA jobs in the league. There are 32 NFL jobs in the, in the, in the world. I mean, that, that's it. That, that's so the number of people who want them and the number of jobs available um, don't really match. Um, but when they, when they come open, you'll be in a good spot. Where can my listeners find you at on social media? Uh, Tim, the letter J Sinclair is really my handle for everything, whether it's Twitter or Instagram or TikTok. Um, It's also my website, timjsinclair.com. So um, find me wherever you like. Um, TikTok videos have been a whole lot of fun recently. So uh, I'll definitely keep that going. Thank you again, Tim Sinclair, for your interview. And best of luck in your future. Can you give us a Chicago Bulls opening? Ooh, I can. Uh, well, first of all, thanks for having me on. My, my pleasure to do it. And uh, here we go. And now the starting lineup for your Chicago Bulls. Thank you, Tim Sinclair, for your interview and best of luck in your future. You got it. Thanks, Brandon. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Tim Sinclair, for your interview, and pass a lot. Thanks. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.